excited here today to show you an unboxing video of the Celestron Nexstar Evolution. This is their 8-inch version. Uh, the 8-inch version comes in a rather large box. The box is uh, 44 inches by 28 inches by just under 16 inches. And it says here that it's uh, 26 kilograms, which is right around 53 pounds. So this is for the uh, Next Art Evolution 8. Some really remarkable technology uh, in this uh, telescope that we're going to be covering a little bit later. But we just wanted to open up the box and show you what's inside of it first. So here we go. So uh, let this box down. All right. Take a handy dandy razor blade. So this should be a box inside of another box because the last one believes in super packing leaves so that they arrive to you safely and as suspected here. There's another box inside. So we open box number two. All right, this is not my most flattering side, but the telescope here, there you go. Hey, look at this, instruction manuals. If you're anything like uh, most customers, and myself included, the first thing you want to do with the instruction manual is get rid of it. We probably don't know, we'll probably need, we'll probably need that later. Just get that out of the way right now. This is a tripod box, Ugh, comes out, all right, now I'm going to just open up the tripod, see what's inside here, yes, one tripod, all right, so in the uh, belief of starting from the bottom up, got some nice packaging there, holds everything safely, Ugh, directional, is this the same tripod? No, it's an updated heavier duty tripod, which is nice. Look at this, it has a little uh, uh, level, bubble level in it. That's gonna be super helpful. Uh, setting up your telescope. And it has the tripod spreader bar in it. So we're gonna open this up. You can tell this is not the first telescope I've ever opened. <laughs> Here we go. This is very nice. This is a heavier duty uh, all the way around. So here the, tri the tripod spreader bar, looks like this is directional, it has the Celestron logo on the top here, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the tripod leg, set that down, you can tell that's heavy duty by the sound there, open this up, have the uh, retention screw here and a, a washer, take that off, put this up inside, we're going to get it. and then tighten this up. We're just going to tighten this up. We're going to try to tighten this up. Finger tight here. All right. This video is moving right along. Almost have the, the tripod built there. So this is nice. Something that I just noticed has two sets of threads right here. The first set of threads, when I unloosen this, holds the screw in place so I can loosen this up and I bet if I get the legs just the right distance apart from each other, spread this out, yeah, like that, there you go, caught on the sandal. Now I can fold this together, wow, very well thought out, so when you're traveling with it you can uh, leave it all together. Then push this down a little bit, once again it's all about getting the legs the right distance apart, push this back up, push the threaded rod back. Okay, so now that we got some of the boxes out of the way, and edited the me almost tripping over the box. Now we're ready to go here. So here's our tripod, very cool tripod. And uh, the next box, this, this small box that was inside that huge box is for the, uh, the alt azimuth head. So uh, this is the uh, super cool new uh, evolution uh, um, mount that has the rechargeable battery uh, and the heavier duty uh, or heavy duty uh, brass worm gears. Oh, and I got the wrong one. This is the uh, optical tube. So that's my mistake. We'll set that aside. We'll get back to that. Uh, here's the uh, empty spacer box that's in there. 
This box is in the larger box just to make sure things don't rattle around during its shipping. I'm guessing that's the accessory box. And this is, should be, the alt azimuth head. All right, so open this, put this out. Now this has the newest Wi-Fi technology. Oh my goodness, look at this. Wow, number one, beautiful, amazing. Super cool. Has the built-in handle for it right there. Has the locks for uh, 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 left, right, and the locks for uh, elevation right here. We should be able to see that it has a pin right on the bottom right here. So it has a pin that's going to go on the center, and then these little uh, feet will kind of uh, clunk into place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to purposefully offset it first so that we can hear that. Put this in the very center and it went right in. Has a little place for uh, uh, eyepieces right up here also. And now when I rotate it, if you come in close here and listen, I'm going to be quiet for a second, which is difficult for me. Clunk right into place. And what that's done is that has aligned these little uh, uh, screws with the pin. So very nice if you're out there setting up while it's dark, you have kind of a positive reinforcement. And now, of course, we're going to find some difficulty doing it because I'm trying to do it quick. So just rotate it and you'll feel it go clunk right into place. Go this way. So the, there you go. The camera can see it. So once that's in place, then we have three of those threaded screws that come up through the tripod that are captured also, by the way, so you don't have to worry about losing them. One, two, just make sure it's relatively tight. We're going to put an optical tube on it, so do all three of them. And now we should be able to see this lock here left, right. Very nice, right there. So this is something brand new that the, that the Nexstar series did not have, is that you have the ability, should you have no batteries, you should be able to unlock, be able to move the telescope left, right, unlock, move the telescope up, down, and continue if uh, you have no battery power. Little things here too that I'm noticing like uh, uh, the zero mark for the um, elevation is actually uh, part of the mold that's in here. Metal here, a little bit of plastic pieces trying to keep the, the weight down, but I wish I could tell you just how, uh, how sturdy this whole mount feels. It is uh, uh, literally um, uh, one and a half times the physical weight and it just... The All right, technical glitch number two taken care of. So now we have the uh, eight inch optical tube. The eight inch optical tube uh, has a, a solar warning sticker on it too that just fell off. Uh, just remember, don't point your telescope at the sun unless you have uh, all the proper filters on there. Uh, and if you're a kid out there, make sure you have parental supervision. But the optical tube here on this new mount slides in. It has the standard Vixen style dovetail plate and it just slides right into the dovetail. If you come over here and take a look, you just right in here. What I do is I just, I usually drop the bottom end in first and then the, the top end, it slides right in. And I can feel that the center of gravity of the, the uh, optical tube is somewhere right around here. So while I hold it in the other hand, I'm going to loosen or rather tighten with my bottom hand down here is the, uh, the jaw, the, the uh, dovetail lock knob right there. That locks in place. And now we're really looking like a telescope here. So from here, uh, we have a couple of other pieces that we need to put in from the accessory box. We have uh, what, what feels like a standard eyepiece, which it is. This is, oh, I'm sorry. No, this is the, uh, and again, we've got to go with the reading glasses. This looks like the uh, inch and a quarter, 13 millimeter fossil. And it has the standard inch and a quarter, 40 millimeter plossel in there. So we've got two different eyepieces. We've got the star diagonal, which is going to fit on the back of the telescope. And we have the uh, finder scope, the red dot finder scope. The red dot finder scope is very easy to put in place. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go find a Phillips head screwdriver and then sl uh, slide this into place right here. Uh, and I would loosen this up and tighten that up. Uh, and and uh, get this uh, more centered on that uh, dovetail uh, uh, lock. And then once I get the diagonal in place, 
get this do this for you so we can show you. This is the hardest part of these telescopes. This is what I get the absolute most phone calls about is when I first uh, get the telescope from somebody who's never had a telescope before is how do I make sure that the finder scope is aligned to what I'm looking at in the telescope. So what I want to do here is get the diagonal in place and then you always start with the lowest power eyepiece and eyepieces are, uh, it's, a, it's a math problem so the, the biggest number on the eyepiece is always going to be your lowest power so it's backwards from what most people initially think. So we're going to put the 40 millimeter eyepiece in here back up all these set screws here. It's nice that these all have two set screws in place just in and again it's the little things it has the uh, inch and a quarter the undercut right here so when I slide this in place and just lock this down it holds it right in place there but we just got a customer in we'll be with you in just one second sir okay. and uh, so now what I would do is I would take this out and the the lens cap here uh, is is unique if you come over on this side what I have here is I have this locking lens cap so by rotating this it, it comes out of the two pins, there's one on the top and one on the bottom right there that hold the lens cap in place. So once I get the, the uh, lens cap off, then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this, I'm going to point the telescope at a treetop or a, a chimney or a stop sign, something greater than 100 yards uh, uh, down the, the road here, get it perfectly centered in the main eyepiece. I would rotate the, the focus knob right there and then once I see it's perfectly focused in here then I would turn on the red dot finder. If you come over here you can see that the red dot finder has an on off switch right here. This uh, controls the brightness of the dot and then once I see where that dot is pointed then I would, I would adjust the up down and then over here on the other side here the left right. So now I can move where the dot is in the uh, finder so that it's pointed right to the, the uh, middle of the eyepiece there. So uh, this is just a real quick preliminary video on the amazing, uh, the, the build quality on this is truly amazing and it, it comes packaged very well. Uh, Lorenz here has brought the instruction manual back to me uh, and remember all of our customers here at Orange County Telescope, they have access uh, to uh, uh, live service up until about 11 o'clock at night most nights. Um, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. It's 888-471-9991 or you can see us obviously at uh, www.octelescope.com. Next Star Evolution everybody. Thanks for watching.